The world is teetering on the edge of an economic precipice, where the might of U.S. sanctions against Russia threatens to either cripple the Kremlin or unwittingly unleash a global catastrophe. Embark with us as we go into the heart of this geopolitical maelstrom, laying out the potentially disastrous ramifications of these sanctions. Will they bring Russia to its knees, or will the tables turn on the U.S.-dominated financial system? Join Everything Finance as we dive in. America is fully prepared, prepared with our NATO allies to defend every single inch of NATO territory. Every single inch. So, Mr. Putin, don't misunderstand what I'm saying. Every inch. Now to begin with, the proponents of the sanctions have failed can't point to macroeconomic indicators that suggest a certain resilience in the Russian economy, while also noting that Russian President Vladimir Putin has yet to relent in his campaign against Ukraine. However, we must not forget that there's a more complex narrative unfolding beneath the surface. Moscow, having lost a significant chunk of its European market and facing the withdrawal of Western investors, finds itself increasingly dependent on China, a development that stokes long-held fears of becoming an economic vassal to its southern neighbor. As Maria Shagina, a senior fellow at the International Institute for Strategic Studies in London, insightfully points out, despite Russia's resilience in the short term, the long-term picture is bleak. Moscow will be much more inward-looking and overly dependent on China. European governments, rather than capitulating, have rapidly sought alternative sources of natural gas and oil. This led to a sharp drop in global gas prices after an initial spike, and Moscow has now resolved to cut its oil production by 5% until June. Consequently, Russia's energy revenue has suffered a significant blow, with the budget deficit deepening and the fiscal gap widening to $34 billion in the first two months of the year. This has forced Moscow to dip into its sovereign wealth fund, one of its primary safety nets. Though Russia can still borrow domestically and has found ways to sell its oil to China and India, it's important to consider the sustainability of Russia selling energy to its big Asian neighbors at rock-bottom prices. Knowing the Russians have nowhere else to turn, could their relationship with India and China begin to morph into economic colonialism? Sanctions critics have also argued that the Russian economy has demonstrated remarkable resilience. Yet they often rely on misleading macroeconomic indicators, such as the strength in ruble, modest contraction of GDP, and low unemployment. These numbers, however, may not paint an accurate picture of the situation on the ground. Consider unemployment. Officially, it stands at a record low of 3.7%. But the reality is that nearly 5 million Russian workers were subject to various forms of hidden unemployment at the end of the third quarter of 2022, with 70% on unpaid leave. Semantics aside, this means that 10% of the Russian workforce is actually without work, a figure reminiscent of the worst levels seen in the 1990s. The ruble's supposed strength is also deceptive, as it is propped up by stringent currency controls and a drop in imports. This policy has negatively impacted industries such as steelmaking, which saw a contraction in finished steel output over 7% in 2022. Those who criticize sanctions often reference Russia's projected 2.7% GDP contraction, which seems to contradict the idea that the economy is faltering. It's important to remember, though, that this GDP figure includes military-related production, an inflated contribution that obscures the true state of affairs. In fact, other indicators reveal a more severe economic contraction than official GDP figures suggest. For example, revenue from sources other than oil and gas exports dropped by 20% in October 2022 compared to the previous year. Sanctions have hit manufacturing industries hardest, as they are most reliant on Western technologies and components. The Russian automotive industry, which provides jobs for 3.5 million people, saw its output plummet by two-thirds in 2022. Even Russia's reported manageable levels of inflation are misleading. The Russian central banks observed inflation as perceived by the public through surveys stands at 16%, over 4 percentage points higher than the official statistic of just under 12%. This year, most analysts predict a further decline in GDP, although some, including the IMF, anticipate modest growth. However, the IMF has stated that by 2027, economic output is projected to be around 7% lower than pre-war forecasts had indicated. In their words, the loss in human capital, isolation from global financial markets, and impaired access to advanced technology will hamper the Russian economy. Before we move on to the argument that Washington's sanctions have been a spectacular own goal, if you're finding this video informative and valuable, please take a moment to hit that like button. By showing your support with a simple thumbs up, you not only help our channel grow, but also encourage us to keep bringing you the latest and most relevant financial discussions. We can now confidently declare that their policies with respect to Russia have failed. 
The strategy of economic blitzkrieg has proven unsuccessful and the sanctions have scored an own goal for their initiators. Let's now consider the antithesis, the notion that Western sanctions against Russia are not only failing to produce the desired effects, but are in fact backfiring. It has been a year since the sanctions were imposed and the Russian economy seems to have weathered the storm much better than anticipated. In March 2022, the Institute of International Finance projected a 15% contraction in the Russian economy by year's end. However, the actual shrinkage turned out to be a much more modest 3%. The International Monetary Fund now expects a slight recovery of 0.3% in 2023 for Russia, compared to a mere 0.7% expansion in the European Union and a 0.6% contraction in Britain. How has the Russian economy demonstrated such resilience in the face of sanctions? It seems that a combination of Russia's size, commercial position, the importance of non-aligned countries and the nation's policy response has contributed to this outcome. Swift capital controls and aggressive interest rate hikes helped the Russian central bank avoid a catastrophic financial crisis in spring 2022, while financial reserves provide a cushion for the time being. The sanctions' lack of greater impact is not for want of effort. The West froze $300 billion in foreign assets belonging to the Russian central bank, blocked foreign investment, severed three-quarters of Russia's financial sector from the Swift network, halted high-tech component exports and discontinued various services to Russia, such as flights, shipping, maintenance, and insurance. Furthermore, Western nations wean themselves off of Russian energy. Despite the sanctions, Russia's crude export volumes reached their highest levels since June. Western companies' exodus from Russia and the G7 price cap on Russian oil exports have indeed caused significant disruptions, but they have not brought the Russian economy or Putin's war effort to its knees. In comparison to the financial crisis of 1998 and 2008, as well as the 2020 pandemic recession, the sanctions have resulted in less severe contractions in real GDP growth. The loss of foreign capital, technology, and know-how will undoubtedly hinder Russia's future development, but it has not led to an insurmountable catastrophe. The experience of the past year demonstrates that the United States and Europe acting alone can no longer mount sanctions with overwhelmingly devastating consequences against a G20 economy. Russia has managed to maintain trade with Asian, Middle Eastern, Latin American, and African countries, compensating for the collapsed trade with the West. A global shadow fleet of uninsured, hard-to-trace tankers deliver Russian oil to buyers around the world. Turkey has emerged as a major conduit for businesses selling to Russia, while Indian refineries and Singaporean oil storage firms profit from buying discounted Russian oil and selling it globally. Ultimately, the sanctions have not entirely severed Russia's connection to the global economy. Instead, they've given rise to new trade alignments, albeit less efficient and more costly ones, that have allowed Russian imports to recover to pre-war levels. In the end, it appears that the Western sanctions against Russia have had mixed results. While they've undoubtedly caused some economic pain, the consequences have not been as severe as initially anticipated. In fact, it's worse than that, the sanctions against Russia have not only failed, but they are also backfiring and accelerating the de-dollarization trend worldwide. After both parties in Washington destabilized the dollar through inflation, the Biden administration opted to brandish it as a weapon, sending a clear message to foreign nations. Divest while you can. In response to the war in Ukraine, the U.S. froze the dollar reserves of Russia's central bank. It is crucial to note that these assets were not American, but rather belonged to the Russian central bank and the Russian people. The seizure aimed to trigger bank runs and collapse Russia's credit system, but it was not successful. Instead, the action revealed the Biden administration's willingness to violate the trillions of dollars rightfully owned by foreign entities, setting a potentially hazardous precedent. With this newfound knowledge, every nation must now question whether the Biden administration will target their dollar assets if they engage in activities deemed objectionable. This development has gifted China and Washington's primary rival with the ammunition needed to mount a global campaign to supplant the dollar. Consequently, China is now making considerable strides in this direction. If foreign entities no longer desire dollars for trade, central bank reserves, private wealth funds, or as the official currency for approximately a dozen countries, those dollars have only one destination a return to the U.S. in an unprecedented flood. This deluge will compete with the dollars already present in the U.S. as decades of accumulated trade deficits come rushing back simultaneously. At that point, hyperinflation will no longer merely play out in the fever dreams of gold bugs and Bitcoin maximalists. As we conclude this exploration of Western sanctions and their potential implications for the global economy, let us know what you think. Type sanctions are great or whoopsie in the comments below. Thank you for joining us here at Everything Finance News. Until next time, stay curious and stay ahead of the curve.